This one should be a fun one. Uh, we are doing some chair repair. Chair repair. Chair, chair repair. Chair repair. This chair was brought to me by one of the guys I work with. When a friend asks for help, you help him. <laughs> it is missing, clearly, a front stretcher. So we're going to try to replicate this. Maybe make one that's a little bit better. This is just a store-bought chair. I think it's made out of poplar. I think that's what I've... It's made out of poplar. Uh, yeah, let's go over it. This is just a store-bought bar height chair. Um, the stretchers, they're mortise and tenon. You can see where the leg was and he's missing now, but you know, this is just done with a router and done with some machine that they have. And then what they do is they drill holes in it and they put screws through that mortise and that tenon to hold everything together. It, the problem is that that's, that's not enough. Uh, that mechanical fastening could really benefit with, from some glue. So that's what we're gonna do. I may dowel pin these as well. Uh, we'll just kind of see, we'll see if I have room for it. But uh, let's get started with making the new stretcher. Here was something I didn't consider at first glance on this chair is that the legs are actually tapered. So where I've got the square held here, it's still flat. This stretcher here right underneath the seat runs in at about 90. It's racked a little bit. It's not perfect anymore. But if you look down here, there's a pretty substantial gap between the blade at the top and the bottom of the leg. So I'm going to have to find some way to account for this angle as I'm making this stretcher because it's going to affect everything from here on out. This is how we're going to get this angle. I've got this piece of scrap just clamped to it here. I've got both of them sitting flat on the workbench and then I'm just going to take this pencil. Oh, they want the lead in that pencil. So here's the line we just took off the chair. As we can see, it does not line up 90. We knew that, we knew that it was tapered. So, T-Bevel to the rescue. We've got a perfect match here, and this is what I'm gonna base all of the shoulders of my tenons off of when we go to make this replacement. So, make sure you got it down tight, and don't lose it or bump it. We are the width of the rest of the stretchers that are on the chair. The next thing I have to do is get the thickness down to three quarters of an inch for this. So we're gonna run it through the planer and clean it up a little bit. I'm about to start planing down the new stretcher for this. And I know that these are the old ones. They're three quarters of an inch. I'm going to take this. I've set it to the exact width of one of these and just check as I'm planing. Hopefully uh, I can get it dialed in exactly the same, but it's a repair. It doesn't have to be perfect. So how long does the stretcher have to be? At the top, before we start tapering, we're right around 13 and a quarter. I know that the distance, or the depth of each of these mortises, is right at three quarters of an inch. It also starts tapering down. It's not 13 and a quarter down here. It's some random number there. Instead of guessing and guessing wrong, uh, I got this clamped up. I, I got my lines drawn here to show where the top of this stretcher is going to go based off of where the old one was. Same thing over here. Lined everything up. Set this in place. And then I just came down the side with my pencil here. I'm still going to need to know the angle I set for the T-bevel because I still have to set the table saw up to make this angled cut. But this was an easier way to mark this for the exact distance that I need this to be instead of trying to guess. Since the legs are tapered, it complicates matters. We got this marked up. Now let's get to cutting some tenons. When you're doing angles on shoulder tenons like this, you have to be really careful with how you're marking everything out. So what I did here, I know that each of these tenons needs to be three quarters of an inch. That measurement down here, I can't carry it up in a straight line because this is not a straight line. So if you look, 
it has a little bit of an angle to it, just like we know the legs do because of the taper. So I have to take this T-bevel, measure out three quarters of an inch and come up alongside it. But then the tenon has a 90 degree shelf here. So you come across it with your square, come back to the other side over here, flip your angle around and then trace it this way. If you do it right, all of these lines will line up. As you can see, these are angled. They connect here, angled again, and then they reconnect again. So I know this is tenon is angled. This should be exactly what I'm looking for. I have to set the miter gauge on my table saw to match this angle of the tapered legs so I can cut these tenons. And you'll see here that it's only just a little bit off of 90. It's very, very minimal, but it does make a big difference. So now I've got a test cut uh, and to get the blade height set right so that the cheeks of my tenon fit into the mortise, but they're not too tight for glue. Since these aren't complementary angles, it's 1.75 degrees or whatever, uh, I've got to cut one side of the shoulders and then I have to flip the miter gauge around and cut the other side. I adjust the angle back, get my T-bevel, reset it, and then cut the other side of the tenons. If it was complementary, I wouldn't have to do this, or if it was just straight 90, you obviously don't have to do this either. So here I've got the tenons rough sized. I just need to cut off the excess from the sides of this board, uh, cut the cheeks of this tenon with my hand saw, and then clean them up and finish sizing them by hand with a chisel. Here's a cleaned up tenon. I've trimmed the shoulders and the cheeks down. It's the right size now, but the next problem that we're gonna have is that it's square and the mortise is rounded. So instead of trying to figure out the radius of what these were, I found out that my Sharpie was actually a pretty close match to the radius of these tenons. So I just marked it out with this and got to work. And this is just paring down the tenons a little bit. They were a little too snug. I couldn't quite get them in the way that I wanted to. Uh, so I pared down the sides a little bit and rounded them over so I could get a good clean fit. I'm finished with the stretcher piece, I think. Uh, I got, still have to try and see if it's gonna fit here. And there's absolutely no way that I would have tried this off camera first. Never, never gonna happen. So I loosened all of the joints on this chair up. So we're about to find out for the first time ever on camera, no lying, if it fits, will it fit? Who knows? We don't know, there's no way to know. So we just gotta try. My goodness. The first chance, the first try on camera, no way. Unbelievable. Never been done before. I'm pretty happy with how that came together here on the sides. It's hard to perfectly match that angle, but I am really, really happy with how that came together. I'm putting some dowel pins in the back. Uh, most people will never see these. They'll be underneath the chair, but this should add a little bit more stability to this mortise and tenon on top of the glue that's already put in with it as well.